frightening feeling, the earth shaking underneath you, and the earth is shaking in various parts of the world, but especially along what's called the Ring of Fire that girdles the Pacific and comes against North America. Well, millions of people in the Baja, California area are bracing for aftershocks from a powerful 7.2 magnitude earthquake that struck of all times on Easter Sunday. It was the largest tremor to hit that region in almost 20 years. Here's our reporter, John Jessup. The shaky video you're watching wasn't shot in the middle of a strong, gusty windstorm. It was taken in El Calhoun, California, as a 7.2 magnitude earthquake interrupted what was a sunny Sunday Easter afternoon. That was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. The quake hit hardest in Mexicali, along California's border with Mexico, triggered south of the San Andreas Fault. The quake was the latest in the region of the Ring of Fire, which circles the Pacific Ocean. It was immediately followed by more than 20 aftershocks. One registered as high as 5.1. The ground started shifting. I'm like, am I having a dizzy spell? And then it happened again. And then something told me to start looking around, and then I'm seeing all these people coming out of, out of their homes. And then I'm seeing people walking down the street. At least 100 people in Mexicali were injured. Some people are still trapped in their homes. And as of Monday morning, only two deaths have been reported. The quake cracked roads, toppled buildings, shattered windows, and knocked out power across the city. All 300 patients at the general hospital were forced to leave because the building had no power or water. Both in California and in Mexico, we have plenty of buildings that we know are susceptible to falling down in this type of shaking. This is a pretty big earthquake. About 100 miles away, employees and guests at the San Diego Hotel evacuated the building after hotel staff found cracks in the floor. I was talking to the concierge and I noticed that the aquarium started shaking and I said to the concierge, I go, that's going to go. And she ran out and I ran right behind her. We were getting ready to head out for the day, the afternoon, and uh, started hearing a loud noise that the boys were bouncing on the bed, so we wanted to make sure. And then the whole room started to shake and the room started making popping and cracking noises. Experts say at least 20 million people were affected by the earthquake, so powerful it was felt more than 300 miles away in Las Vegas. Damage in the border city of Calexico is so bad that downtown is closed indefinitely since a lot of the damaged buildings built in the 1930s and 40s weren't retrofitted for a strong earthquake like this one. John Jessup, CBN News. Why is it happening? It's hard to say exactly why, but it does look as if the crust of the earth is becoming to unstable, and it's just one thing after the other. I mean, big, big earthquakes, tsunamis, and we haven't even begun to see it. Jesus spoke <clears throat> about the possibility in the last days of earthquakes in diverse places, and that's what we're seeing, earthquakes and famines and pestilence and war. It's happening. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN Newsroom. Lee? Pat, the Obama administration is warning Americans that job growth will be slow during this economic recovery. Despite an $860 billion stimulus package a year ago, unemployment has gone higher than the White House predicted. It remains stuck at 9.7 percent, and top economic officials say it's not going to get better anytime soon. That's not enough to get a lot of job growth. We'll get positive job growth. It'll be enough to probably bring the unemployment rate down a little bit. But you need faster than that to really make a dent. So far, job growth has been slower in this recovery than past expansions. And Pat, many analysts warn that the new health care bill will also hinder job growth. Lee, it's not just the health care bill. It's the general uh, attitude of the administration. They've got so many taxes, businessmen don't know how to keep up with them all. There is great complexity in this health care bill. It is certainly against job uh, creation. Why would any business uh, uh, in its sane mind go out and hire new people knowing that they're going to add huge amounts of uh, health care costs to their bottom line? They're not going to do it. And it's one thing after the other. This administration is anti-business. And they can say all they want to, but you can't have jobs on the one hand and hurt business on the other. They, it just doesn't work that way. And for some reason, the folks in Washington haven't found that out yet. Lee? Interest rates rose after Friday's unemployment report, and many analysts believe they're going to keep climbing. Some experts warn that the era of falling interest rates is over. 
Some believe the higher rates are a warning sign of inflation. Others say rates will rise because of the huge projected federal deficits over a trillion dollars a year for years to come, Pat. Well, what it's going to mean is the uh, dollar is going to fall. Uh, the uh, yield on bonds, what this does, you know, the, the uh, value of bonds is in inverse relationship to the interest. So if the interest goes up, the uh, nominal value of bonds goes down. So people are losing money on their bond investments, and uh, they, they're going to probably either, well, they'll defer buying bonds or the Treasury comes out again trying to sell bonds. People are going to demand a higher interest rate, a higher interest premium, and uh, there'll be a, well, a self-defeating spiral that goes on economically. So make no mistake about it, the, the, you, you, we're paying the price for the profligate ways of this government. Lee? British Prime Minister Gordon Brown says some of the world's largest economies have agreed to a global tax on banks. Brown tells the Financial Times that Britain, France, and Germany support the idea, and he hopes the U.S. will join them. The tax would cost American banks an estimated $10 billion. Brown hopes the G20 summit of leading economic powers will agree to the plan in Seoul, South Korea in November, along with other regulations for the banking system. Senator Arlen Specter is warning that Justice John Paul Stevens' retirement this year could lead to a Republican filibuster. Stevens announced he may retire as soon as this summer. Senator Specter says a filibuster would tie up the Senate over a Supreme Court nominee. Justice Stevens turns 90 next month. He is the oldest member of the current court and the second oldest justice in U.S. history. The Obama administration is reportedly considering three candidates to succeed Stevens. U.S. Solicitor General Elena Kagan, along with federal judges Diane Wood and Merrick Garland. The leader of the Church of England is urging Christians not to overreact to all the controversy over wearing crosses in the workplace. In one case, a Christian nurse was told to remove her crucifix. She refused and has filed a claim against the hospital. Archbishop of Canterbury Roland Williams says it's the latest example of a, quote, strange mixture of contempt and fear toward the Christian faith. But Williams says believers should keep the larger picture in mind. The London Daily Telegraph reports Williams wants British Christians to remember that fellow believers are facing true persecution in places like Nigeria, Sudan, and Iraq. The older you get, the happier you become. Live Science reports that research indicates aging is key to happiness. Some reasons? Older adults have a positive outlook on life and get more respect in general. And they tend to look at the past through rose-colored glasses, reflecting on happy memories. One study also says that aging uh, makes a person more comfortable with themselves and their role in society. They also have more time to enjoy hobbies, travel, and do volunteer work. Pat, you just turned 80. Uh, what do you think about that study? Well, you <laughs> contemplate death. The <laughs> Moses. Oh, he's so rosy, isn't he? <laughs> Moses said, let us contemplate death that we might be wise. <laughs> so, we just shot that study out yeah. of the water. <laughs> well, I mean, you do. You think, hey, you know, I, I don't need to fight the kids any longer. The, you know, the, and that's a happy thing. Yeah, that's yes. a happy thing. The game's over. <laughs> For some people, maybe it's not over for me yet, but you, you do begin to think, hey, I've got 10 years, maybe 15, maybe 5, you know. Might as well be happy is the bottom either, line of either, that. Either happy or, you know, <laughs> don't worry, be happy. We'll talk later, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Still ahead, get ready for some hoop action. Players from the Final Four teams talk about how they handle that pressure. Definitely no pressure on me. I just go out there and play the game that I love and just try to glorify his name. To get to this point, it takes, it takes a lot of faith. Behind the scenes Final Four coverage you won't get anywhere else. That's coming up. But first, if you're in tax trouble, help is just ahead. Learn how you can get yourself out easily, legally, and inexpensively when we come back. 58 different individuals are using, absolutely using my old social security number. My credit score just went out the window. Identity theft can be devastating. That's why LifeLock is proactive protection, working to help stop identity theft before it happens. And the biggest difference is stopping it before it starts. LifeLock's exclusive identity alert system goes beyond mere credit monitoring, which only alerts you after the theft. 
With LifeLock, it's like having a digital fingerprint. If a new application doesn't match you, we send an alert. And if needed, we help fix the identity theft. Don't wait another minute. Call now. Go with the industry leader. Join LifeLock and get alerts to important information. A $1 million service guarantee. Plus a team of identity theft protection specialists. Enroll now and get 10% off your enrollment for you and your entire family with today's special offer. Call today and mention ID Alert or go to LifeLock.com. Tomorrow. He's been king of the court for nearly two decades. Now meet the woman who taught him toughness. Shaquille O'Neal's mom joins us live. And then... He said, I want to show you how much I care about you. A young singer is forced to make a choice. Her career... We walked in and there was no one else there. And he locked the door. Or her life... He shook me and said, you would not be where you are today if it wasn't for me. On the 700 Club. Well, they say there's two things you can't beat. One is death, the other is taxes. And April the 15th is tax time, and more than 25 million taxpayers are faced with the terrifying prospects of so-called IRS audits, assessments, and even worse. But is there a way to file from home without fear? Tax expert Daniel Pilla says yes. Two greatest fears among Americans during tax time are the IRS can do anything it wants legally and tax mistakes equal jail time. But tax litigation consultant Dan Pilla says these fears are false. He says people are too quick to submit to federal tax notices instead of fighting them. As a result, millions of responsible Americans end up paying untold billions each year, money they may not even owe. In his book, The IRS Problem Solver, Pilla offers practical advice for those who file on their own, as well as steps to combat the IRS the next time the feds come knocking at the door. Pilla takes on subjects from audits to tax debt caused by current or former spouses. And he says you can solve your tax problems easily, legally, and inexpensively. Pilla's book provides real-life scenarios along with steps and even form letters to combat the claim. It's all just part of his mission to help ordinary Americans in their battles with the tax agency. Well, the AP says this guy knows more about the IRS than the commissioner of the IRS. It's a book called The IRS Problem Solver, From Audits to Assessments, How to Take the Worry Out of Your Taxes. A very interesting book, very well researched, and our author of it, guest is here with us today, Dan Pillard. Dan, it's good to have you It's with good us. to be here, Dan. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> All right. Is it as awe-inspiring? And l l let me ask you, you get one of these notices in the mail. I've gotten them. Sure. A lot of people do. They're, they're generated by computers. How many of them are accurate? Well, but first of all, let's talk about how many there are. There's, there's 100 million of these notices every year that the IRS mails out. And government accounting office studies have shown that these notices are wrong anywhere, roughly about 50% of the time. You know, Stop it's plus, it. Yeah. 50% wrong, and yet they sent out 100 million of them? Plus or minus 50% of the time the notices are wrong. And the, and the problem is people don't know what to do with them, Pat. They get these notices that say something like, uh, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we looked at your tax return for the year uh, 2007, and we found a mistake, but don't worry, we fixed it. Now you owe us 1250 bucks. please send a check. Yeah. Well, and of course, people will look at their tax return, and they can't find the mistake that's made, and maybe they'll sit down with their preparer, and the preparer will say, you know, I can't see a mistake in here. I don't know what they're talking about. And people get frustrated because they don't know how to challenge these notices. Well, what I've done in the Problem Solver book is I've shown you step by step exactly how well, to do that. The average person says, I don't want the hassle. It costs a lot of money to go to court. Here's the check. Well, and you're right, and people have a tendency to do that, but the problem is the average computer notice is worth about $5,000 to the IRS. So, you know, people don't have the luxury of just writing the check. Uh, you know, for example, we, you know, as your, as your intro segment said, we've got about 25 million people in trouble with the IRS. Right now, Pat, there's more tr people in trouble with the IRS today than at any other time in the last 10 years. So it's not so easy to just write the check. Well, they had big hearings, Senator Roth, and they, they beat up on the IRS and said, yes, you've got to give taxpayers a break, blah, blah, blah. What came of all that? Well, you're, what you're talking about are the Senate finance committee hearings into IRS abuse. Right. I was a consultant to the National Commission on Restructuring the IRS during that period.
period of time, the 1979, 19, 19, uh, I'm sorry, 1997, 1998, and then the Restructuring Act passed in 98. Mm -hmm. And we created the Taxpayers' Bill of, Rights Act, Bill of Rights Act Part 3, which added a lot more taxpayers' rights to the tax code, and the IRS has been whining about that ever since. You know, we're, we're hindering the IRS in the collection of taxes. Well, all we're doing is protecting people. But the fact of the matter, Pat, is the, is the uh, pendulum has now swung back the other way. Mm -hmm. We've got an administration now that's spending uh, trillions of dollars in, in deficits. You know, we, we've got, there used to be a time when $400 billion was a big deficit. Yes, it you was. Know, now we, now we've $100 got, billion was a big deficit. Now we've got $1.3, $1.4 trillion, mm -hmm. and, and the administration is looking at the IRS and saying, go get the money. Yeah. You, you just got to go get the money, and if you have to break thumbs to get the money, then do it. And that's what the American people are faced with right now, and that's why it's so important for you to understand your rights when you're dealing with the IRS so that you don't get run over in right, the process. So you get one of those letters, and it says you owe $1,200. What do you do? Well, first thing you need to understand is, 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 is that you've got the right to respond in writing, mm -hmm. all right? And you have to respond in writing. If you want to challenge the notice, it's got to be done in writing. You've got 60 days from the date you receive the notice to respond by saying, I disagree with your calculation and I demand an abatement. When you respond that way, the IRS has no alternative but to cancel that tax liability as though it never existed. And if they believe that you really owe the money, they have to send a letter called a notice of deficiency. And this is an itemized statement of why they think you owe the money they say you owe. Mm -hmm. And now this gives you an opportunity to read this itemized statement and make an intelligent decision. Are these people right or wrong? If they're wrong, you have a further opportunity for appeal. Mm -hmm. And you have the right to appeal it without parting with a nickel's worth of your money. And if the IRS is correct, of course, they're right half the time. Well, you know, if they're so right half the time, have, <clears throat> they, excuse me, have they accrued penalties and interest? Excuse me. Well, penalties and interest will accrue to the extent that you actually owe the tax liability. That's true. Right. But one of the things that people need to know about, and I talk about this in the book quite at length, is how to cancel penalties. Mm -hmm. Every single penalty provision of the tax code can be canceled if you can demonstrate that you acted in good faith and based on a reasonable cause for your actions. Pat, the penalties are for deliberate tax cheaters, not for honest people that make a mistake. You've got an interesting section in here about these people who claim that they're going to give you a zero tax liability right, and right. the untaxers. Huh? Yeah, the so-called untaxers. The untaxers. The untaxers. What about yeah. that? Well, it's, it's just a scam as well. I mean, there's so many people out there that are arguing that the tax laws are illegal or unconstitutional or filing a tax return is voluntary or, you know, it only applies to a foreign uh, citizens and not U.S. Mm -hmm. citizens. And all that stuff is nonsense, Pat. This has gotten honest people in trouble with the IRS for decades following these arguments. So my best advice is to stay away from that stuff entirely. Right. File your tax returns the way you're supposed to. Pay your tax the way you're supposed to. But that that doesn't mean you should roll over to the IRS and just uh, pay bills that are not are not owed. They use a lot of bluff. You know, they tried to have uh, cases like Willie Nelson and mm -hmm. Leona Helmsley. Yeah, I mean, yeah. big cases. Helmsley goes to jail. Scares people. Yeah, no question about it. You know, when I testified to the Senate Finance Committee during the abuse hearings, I documented 13 specific ways that the IRS uses bluff and intimidation, misinformation and disinformation, and in many cases they just outright, bold-faced lie to people concerning what their rights are and the limitations are. And you can't expect the IRS to tell the truth about what your rights are. Mm -hmm. Their job is to get the money, Pat. That's, you take all 20,000 pages of the tax code and you can boil it down to three words. Get the money. And, and and so, and, <laughs> Shake it out. You know, and, and as I said, if you've got to break thumbs to do it, then that's, that's unfortunately the direction that we're going in now. Have they come out after you? Uh, they haven't, no. And, well, they, they did. Do, they, well, put it this way. They tried to audit me in, in 19, uh, 1990, and what so quite a while ago. And they, they didn't get any money out of me, and that was the end of it, so they've left me alone ever since. They have? They Despite have. the yeah. fact you're writing books like Well, that. but here's the thing. There's nothing in these books, Pat, that's, gonna, that's illegal. There's nothing in these books that gets people in trouble. There's nothing in, this, in these books that, uh, that is, 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 is any way defies the law. What I'm doing with these books is showing people exactly how to use the rights that are in the tax law to keep from paying taxes they don't owe. Don't owe. Don't owe. But if they do owe... If, if you owe the money, you know, you owe the money. And there's, no mm -hmm. question, there's no question about that. But then that raises another question. If I owe and can't pay, you know, now what do I do? I said there's 25 million people in trouble with the IRS. A lot of these people can't pay the taxes they owe. 60% of the people that owe money to the IRS owe more than $10,000. And when you add the interest and penalties in that bill, you know, it doubles, triples, quadruples, and people are, are, are bleeding from the ears financially trying to find a way to, to solve those problems. Well, I also talk about negotiating settlements with the IRS based on your ability to pay. 
What about if you've got a spendthrift spouse who leaves you in the lurch with all kinds of bills? How do you get out of that? It happens too often. One of the things that we added to the tax code in 1998 with the Restructuring Act was more and broader innocent spouse rights. Mm -hmm. And so now a spouse who's been victimized by a spendthrift husband uh, or, or you know, vice versa, unfortunately, too often it's the man, not the woman, that, yeah. uh, that leaves the family in the lurch here. I'm sorry to say, but it's true. And, uh, and so in situations like that, spouses have, uh, the, you know, the woman has a number of, of opportunities, uh, not the least of which is what they now call equitable relief. And what that means is if you can show the IRS that it's fundamentally unfair for you as the spouse to be responsible for your husband's tax debt, you can, you can avoid that debt, and I talk about that in the Problem Solver book as well. You have worked with these folks for the longest kind of time. Are, are they uh, de decent, honorable people, or are they people who are rapacious and they're <laughs> going to get you come what may? Well, you know, when we're talking about the Internal Revenue Service, Pat, we're talking about 100,000 people that work for that agency. Okay. And so, you know, as you can imagine, it's, uh, you, you, get, you get every kind of person there that, that uh, you know, under the, under the sun. Uh, I, would, I would have to say that the majority of people that work for the IRS are honest people that are trying to do a very, very difficult job mm -hmm. under what are probably impossible circumstances. We've got a tax code that consists of you know, upwards of 20,000 pages of law and regulation that are changed constantly. Yeah. We're seeing major tax law changes now, Pat, that are going on two and three times a year. It used to be once every two or three years we'd have a mm -hmm. major tax law. Now it's every two or three times a year. And with this, with this new health care bill, all kinds of more tax uh, burdens are loaded in with that. You know, these people are doing a very, very difficult job. Now, having said that, mm -hmm. there's, there's too many people in the IRS, and there's no way to put a number on this, but there's too many people in the IRS that just want to twist people's arms, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's a power trip. It is. <laughs> Dan Pilla, ladies and gentlemen, this is an interesting book, The IRS Problem Solver. If you've got some problems with the IRS, where do you get this book? Uh, the easy way to get it is right off my website. You can either uh, go to taxhelponline.com. That's my website, taxhelponline.com, okay. or you can call my phone number, which is one 800 346-6829, 1-800-346-6829. Well, you have rights. Don't give them up. Dan, thank you so much for Thanks being here. Very me. interesting. Appreciate it. Good book. Terry? Well, up next, an all-access pass to the final four players. I hope that they see Jesus in me. I've sacrificed myself for this team because that's what he did for everyone else. I mean, you can always turn to God just to put your faith in him. We'll give you an inside look at the best teams in college hoops after this. Finding something you need at a discounted price is exciting, right? Well, today I've got great news. The best investments of the 21st century, gold and silver, both are great values right now. That's right. This is a major buying opportunity in the strongest bull market in decades. And now's the time to take action. Here's why. Following major gold dips, prices historically rise an average of 36%. So, if this pattern continues, gold may soon rise to $1,400 an ounce. You better seize this golden opportunity today. Protect and grow your assets with gold from the only company I trust, Swiss America. Education is the first step. Call or visit online today for the Pat Boone 2010 Rare Opportunity Kit. Now's the time to own the best investments of the century from the best company in the country at the best prices of the year. Call now. You're stuck on a treadmill. You're making minimum payments on your credit cards, and you just don't get anywhere. Call Consolidated Credit. They'll get the credit card companies to reduce or eliminate your interest. Get off the treadmill. Get on with your life. Call toll-free 1-800-244-9095. Consolidated credit. When credit card debt is the problem, they're the solution. For fans of college basketball, the final four is down now to the final two. Tonight, Duke and Butler play for the championship. Sports reporter Sean Brown has been in Indianapolis all weekend covering the action and catching up with some key players. Here's Sean. The first matchup, 
Butler, Michigan State. The Bulldogs entered the game after a 25-game winning streak, but the Spartans' Corey Lucius made a statement right away with these two three-pointers within the first two minutes of the game. But Butler's Gordon Hayward answers with two of his own. They would go into the half tied at 28. Late in the second, with the Bulldogs up by three, Ronald Norad makes a steal, which leads to two freebies for Sean Van Zant, who misses the first and makes the second. Then with eight seconds left in the game, Ronald Norad gets this defensive rebound and is fouled. He heads to the line. Both shots are good, and the Bulldogs are headed to their first NCAA championship game in the school's history. Second matchup, West Virginia, Duke. It was Duke, Duke, and more Duke. The Mountaineers tried to make a comeback, but went into the half down by eight. Later in the half, the Mountaineers made a valiant effort for when their star guard, Deshaun Butler, goes down with a knee injury. Duke continued to close the deal and are headed into the final against Butler. Hello and welcome to Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indianapolis for CBN's coverage of the 2010 Men's Final Four, which is now down to the final two, Butler and Duke. Tonight, those two teams will battle it out for the NCAA championship. But just a few days ago, four teams came here with one goal in mind, to win. And even though West Virginia and Michigan State are going home, some of the players from each of the teams realize that there are more important things than winning a championship. You know, God has blessed me to be here. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know where I've been without him. Senior guard Deshaun Butler had a tough game against the Blue Devils. But he says when he's on the court, there's really only one thing that matters. Play, I'm playing for an audience of one, you know. He's given me the talent and the people and put the people around me to, for me to be successful. And he, obviously he's helped me in general just with my lifestyle and everything. Junior guard Joe Mazzula has had some trials on and off the court. And he says his faith in God is what keeps him grounded. I mean, he's, you know, he got me here to this point, And I think uh, throughout some of the difficult times, I really kind of abandoned, uh, you know, asking him for help. And I think once I went back to him, I think that's what made, you know, all the difference. Freshman forward Dan Jennings has a tattoo to show he's not ashamed of his faith. I got it um, last year, and it means his blood. And it means, like, covered in the blood of Jesus. And he means everything to me. Uh, he's the number one person in my world. I mean, honestly, he means everything to me. And... Um, you know, I just, I'm just thankful my parents brought me up that way and taught me all that at an early age. So now, when I face adversity, I can deal with it that way. The Butler Bulldogs made history by advancing to their first championship game in the school's history. And the big reason for their success is sophomore guard Gordon Hayward, who led the team in scoring with 19 points. And he says that his faith is what helps him deal with the pressure of it all. If you, if you play for him and play for the, for the right reasons, then there's really nothing to be worried about. No pressure on us, so um, and definitely no pressure on me. I just go out there and play the game that I love and um, just try to glorify his name. Ronald Norad made some big free throws during Saturday night's game, and he says that when people see him on the court, he hopes they see more than just a basketball player. I hope that they see Jesus in me. I really do. I hope that they see, you know, a guy who's having fun, who's loving life, and, you know, who's just extremely blessed to be in this opportunity. Uh, he's everything. Uh, you know, I think, you know, my life is, you know, trying to walk in his footsteps and what he's done. Um, you know, the way that I handle myself with the team, um, you know, I, I've sacrificed myself for this team because that's what he did for everyone else. It's been six seasons since the Blue Devils have been in a Final Four. And after Saturday night's game, they prove they are back with a vengeance. And the big reason for their success is sophomore forward Miles Plumley and his younger brother Mason, who've come from a long line of ball players that have taught them to rely on their faith. I mean, that's been something that uh, my dad has instilled in us, and um, honestly, is um, I don't know, just carried me to this point because it's not been easy, and um, it's just a lot of times where things aren't going very well for you. So. Um, to get to this point, it takes it takes a lot of faith. You can always turn to God just to put your faith in Him. You don't have to put it in any person, you know. Sophomore guard Seth Curry is redshirting this season after transferring from a different school. And the expectations are high, mainly because of his older brother, Golden State Warrior Stephon Curry. And he says when he's on the court, he hopes to bring glory to God. It means a lot. So that's, that's why I play the game, just because God gave me this uh, ability to go out and I play basketball, so I try to maximize that to the most and give them the glory for everything I do. I mean, basketball is only one part of my life, small part, but that's temporary. And I mean, a uh, relationship with Jesus Christ will last you forever. Those boys have got it right. You know, the <clears throat> final four is going to be over. 
tonight, as a matter of fact. It'll all be over. Somebody will be the champion. Somebody will be the runner-up, and that's the end of it. They can maybe get a ring or get a plaque or get something, but that's it. Same thing with the Super Bowl. Get a ring, get some extra money, get a place maybe on the all-star team. What happens next? What happens next in your life? Ask yourself, what is next? What is next? And when it's all finished, what is next for everybody is the fact that you will leave this world and you're either going to be in the presence of God forever or else you will be apart for him, from him forever. And that's the choice you have to make. And so these young athletes <clears throat> have already realized the major choice of life. It's either going to be Jesus or it's going to be a life apart from him. Now, if you want to know for a certainty what's going to happen to you next, I want you to pray with me and let the Lord take over. If he's got control of your life and you've surrendered it to him, then good things are going to happen because he is in charge. I want you to bow your head right now. <clears throat> I want you to pray with me if you don't know him. Now let's let Jesus take over. Pray these words. Jesus, I love you, Lord. And I know you died for me. And right now, I surrender my life to you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. And so, Jesus, at this moment, I declare that I am yours. And thank you that you are mine. Come now into my heart, Lord Jesus. Live your life in me. <clears throat> and I will live for you. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, that you've heard my prayer. And thank you that you've come into my heart. Now, for those who prayed with me, that's such an important prayer. It's so important. And I want to do something for you. I want to help establish you in the Lord as you start out. So you say, well, what's next? What does it mean what I've just, just done? What does it mean? And what's going to happen next for me and the Lord? <clears throat> what about his second coming? What about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What about all these things? Well, I have a little... CD here that I did, 73 minutes of teaching, plus a booklet of scriptures, and it'll tell you the answers of what you're looking for, and I'll give it to you free. There's, there's no obligation whatsoever, but if you want to just call in and say, I prayed with Pat, I gave my heart to Jesus, and please send me that little book called A New Day, 1-800-759-0700. It's a toll-free call. Here's Terry. Well, today's Money Monday, and we've got your email. Jason asks, what's the difference between a bull market and a bear market? I know it has something to do with the stock exchange, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. We'll bring it on with Jason's question and more. That's still ahead. And with us today, Emmy Award-winning narrator Stephen Johnston with his brand new DVD Bible. That's right. And brand new technology has put the entire King James Bible on just one DVD. Instead of $29.95 for two discs, we're passing the savings on to you and all you'll pay is just $19.95. Easy to see large text is displayed on your TV while I read every word to you. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, this would be great for someone like my mother who's beginning to lose her vision. It's easy. With a touch of your remote, you can go to chapter and book. Chapter 4. I understand there's a bonus section. That's right. There's a tour of the Holy Land gallery of photos with all its rich history. Well, I've never seen anything like this. We sold over a million of the two-disc DVD Bibles for just $29.95. But this new single DVD Bible with the Holy Land Photo Tour is yours for just $19.95. You save $10. When you order now, you get the children's Bible favorites, a $9.95 value, free. David knew he could stalk Goliath with his slingshot, 
the DVD Bible makes a great gift. You're right. And because the DVD Bible makes such a perfect gift, when you call in the next 20 minutes, we'll send you a second DVD Bible to share with a loved one absolutely free. You get two complete DVD Bibles of $40 value for just $19.95. Order your DVD Bible right now. And God bless you. I know this will change your life. To order your complete King James Version of the Bible on one DVD with both the Old and New Testament and get a second King James Bible free, both with your two free children's bonus CDs, all for only $19.95 plus processing, call 1-800-925-4334. That's 1-800-925-4334. Or go to BiblesOnDVD.com. It makes a great gift for friends, family, Bible study, Sunday school, or church groups. Order now. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Churches reached out on Easter Sunday to help victims of the recent flooding in New England. One Rhode Island church opened its doors to feed those who lost everything. I've got a bag of clothes and living out of my car. I have 10 fingers, 10 toes, and a really good meal. So my family's here and couldn't ask for anything more. It's a great outlook, isn't it? The outreach came at Dunn's Corner Community Church in Westerly, Rhode Island. That's one of the areas hit hardest after heavy rain sent the Pocketuck River spilling over its banks. Christian pilgrims celebrated Easter Sunday in Jerusalem. They gathered in a place called the Garden Tomb, where many believe Jesus was buried and rose from the grave. It was powerful. It was a renewal of my soul and my spirit and the reality of the truth of his resurrection power in my life personally. And I, I just affirmed in my heart, afresh and anew, that he was my offering and he was that final offering that settles it. It just settles it for us as believers in, in Christ and Yeshua. Amen. The reason we can live an exchanged life, as they say. You can find out more about this story and our other latest stories from CBN News by going to our website at CBN.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. Dear God, my mom says I'll be sick for a while, but it'll be okay. In his letters, she found hope. That gorgeous smile of yours is about the only thing that keeps me going. In his courage, she found strength. I'm God's warrior. I am so proud of you. In his faith, she found a reason to believe. It took Tyler, flatter to God, to show me what I wasn't seeing. Letters to God. You know that God picked you. He picked you to be my mom. Rated PG. Tomorrow, he's been king of the court for nearly two decades. Now meet the woman who taught him toughness. Shaquille O'Neal's mom joins us live. And then... He said, I want to show you how much I care about you. A young singer is forced to make a choice. Her career... We walked in and there was no one else there. And he locked the door. Or her life... He shook me and said, you would not be where you are today if it wasn't for me. On the 700 Club. Well, we always let you know that Monday, Monday is Money Monday here. That means we like to take your email questions regarding finances. And Pat, this first one is from Jason, who says, what is the difference between a bull market and a bear market? I know it has something to do with the stock exchange, but not sure exactly what. Can you explain it? <laughs> I tell you, Jason, you're not exactly up to speed on things, are you? But theoretically, the bull is going up. That, that's a market that has a trend that is uh, uh, moving up. It has some down tips, but it's, it's, the basic trend is up. A bear market is doing the opposite. It's starting to come down. And uh, 
So there's a trend that indicates that they're selling, and I guess the bear tears with these teeth, and the bull throws with his head and throws it up. I don't know. Okay, this is Jack, who says, I usually have an income tax refund of several thousand dollars and spend it on some new computer game gear. This year, I think I need to grow up a bit and do something smarter with the money. What are some ways you would suggest I use the money instead? He's talking about several thousand dollars. Jack, I think the most important thing is that you begin to set up a, an account uh, uh, hopefully, an uh, account with some stock that has dividends that pay mm -hmm. significant amounts. And <clears throat> you could begin to set that, uh, I would probably put it in what's called a Roth IRA, uh, so that uh, uh, you don't uh, have any uh, tax deduction when it goes in, but you don't pay any taxes when it comes out. It stays sheltered in that. So you need to begin to build something like that up. And uh, that's what I would do more than anything else. Of course, if you have heavy credit card debts and they're charging you 20, 25, 30 percent, you ought to pay them down first. Get rid of your debt first and then save. Yeah. Yeah. This is Michelle who says, I noticed that the government is redesigning the $100 bill. Do you know what kind of safeguards they're using in the design to prevent counterfeiting? Well, they have so many. They they change the paper. There's various things in the paper that have that's different the colors. Holograph kind of thing. Yeah, on they, they've got the holograph, but they've they've got a whole new design coming out right now, and uh, uh, it, certain bills will change colors. They'll have a glow like blue mm -hmm. or gold or something. And I mean, it's it's quite complex what they do. And and apparently. counterfeiting was a big deal a few years ago. I mean, there was a group of uh, people coming out of Lebanon who were just rife counterfeiters and they were doing an excellent job because the uh, reproduction machinery that is available right now is quite precise. So the government had to take steps to, they have offsets on the pictures, they have things behind the pictures, they have stuff around the corners. I mean, you could go into great detail, but it's been quite carefully thought out. And uh, they're even going to the $5 bill now. It's not just the hundreds. <clears throat> right. Okay, this is Karen who says, when I shop or go out, I love to go to local businesses. My husband says they're more expensive than the big box stores, but I can't help feeling that if we don't patronize these mom and pop places soon, we won't have any local businesses left to go to. What do you think? I think that's a very wise conclusion. They, these people know you. They're your friends. You go in and they say, hello, Mrs. Jones. Uh, here's your husband, and I know... Boy, that's you, rare and nice today. It is, it? <laughs> but I, I know you like a particular kind of food, and we just got this in, and I, 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 here's a can I've saved for you. I mean, that kind of stuff. You don't get that at Walmart. Yeah, years ago it used to be like that everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but not any longer. So by all means, patronize those people. So if you spend a couple pennies more, I mean, so what? They're your friends. Yeah. Okay, this is Drew who says, My wife and I really need to sell our home this summer, and I know the housing market is more difficult these days. Since we're both pretty handy, we thought about renovating the kitchen. Is it a good idea to add home improvements to try to sell a home these days? I think the most important thing you need is so-called curb appeal. You, you need to dress it up outside uh, to give a good impression. So when people look at it, they say, oh, isn't this pretty? There's just a nice feeling. You've got some nice bushes and, and maybe a paint job and so forth. And if one of the um, shutters has fallen loose, you've fixed it up so it didn't, you know. Uh, that kind of thing will probably do more to help sell your house. Uh, kitchens are important to improvement, but some people say it depends on the part of the country. In some parts of the country that this is a premium, other parts people mm -hmm. didn't care less. Well, so, I, I watch Home and Garden TV for right. relaxation sometimes, and they say kitchens are the number one thing to improve. Oh, I mean, yeah. curb appeal certainly, but I mean, from an interior standpoint, oh, you yeah. get more bang Well, the for woman your buck, wants so to know speak. about the kitchen, and Absolutely. I mean, you better make plenty of big islands and counters and all that stuff and yeah. if you can do it, but don't blow a lot of money on fixing up your house because you will not recover it, regardless of where you put the money. Okay, this is Ella who says, with the price of gas continuing to go up, I really need to save some money on my car costs. Do you have some tips that will increase my car's fuel efficiency? Make sure your, your, your car is tuned up. Uh, make sure that you don't have jackrabbit starts when you come off. You, you, you accelerate slowly and stop slowly. If you drive at 55, you can save an enormous amount of gas over driving at 70, 75, for instance. Uh, make sure the, the uh, air filter is clean. Uh, make sure you've got 
good oil in your in your crankcase. I mean, there are a number of things like this that will, and especially your tires are inflated. If your tires are underinflated, it'll it'll sap, sap up gas like crazy. Mm -hmm. So, just a few little things that you can tune it up. Yeah, get and none of those four. things are very expensive. No, you yeah, can get three or four miles more miles to the gallon. All right. Okay, this is Matt who says a year ago I relocated to get a job in another state. I still have forty thousand dollars in a state teacher retirement plan back where I used to live. Since the fund has performed fairly well, are there any reasons why I need to move the money at this time? Not, not that I know of. If you're happy and mm -hmm. they're happy, it's your money. And if it's still building up, it's building up tax-free. So yeah, absolutely. leave it alone. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's all the time we've got for your Money Monday questions today. But we welcome them. So if you'd like to email them to us, we'll try to get to them in a future show. We talked about old people being happy because yes, they're going did. to die. <laughs> <laughs> did I, say I try that? to keep him on track, but it's a little <laughs> difficult sometimes. <laughs> Gerard Secker may be 72 years old, but he doesn't plan to retire anytime soon. As a farmer, he says his last few years have been his best because he learned the secret to a good harvest. Gerard Secker has been a Missouri crop farmer since the 1970s. But he'll be the first to tell you that he learned his most important lessons about harvest time from the 700 Club. I started watching the 700 Club back in the late 70s and early 80s. I liked the Pat's perspective on the Bible. and He talked about uh, tithing and that you should sow so you can reap. I didn't tithe right off the bat. I just kind of kind of put your foot in the cold water, see, and just barely doing a little bit at a time. So I kept and it uh, seemed like I was doing a little better with my finances as, a tie, as I gave more. And uh, finally I said, well, shucks, I might as well go all the way and I'd start giving you 10% or more. Over the past 40 years, God has blessed Gerard with several hundred acres, some of the best soybean and corn crop in the state, and given him the strength to keep working hard. I'm 72 years old, and everybody says, aren't you retiring? I said, no, I'm not going to retire. I don't want to do it myself. I retire. I got lots of energy. I take Pat's uh, shake, you know, and all these vitamins and minerals, and uh, I got real good health. The Lord's blessed me with good health, and uh, I just feel like uh, <clears throat> He's leaving me here for a purpose. And while I'm here, I'm going to try to fulfill it. Gerard says that even when hard economic times hit, he's still profitable. Last year, you thought I'd lost more money than because of the down in the market, but. The farming was the best I've ever had, and, and, and just the Lord provided. In the last three or four years, I just just made more and more and more every year. And I think CBN's good ground. I do, and I can see where they take it to uh, other countries, providing water or food, medical supplies. Put a lot of seed in the ground, you may get a bountiful harvest. You put small amount of seed, you may not get near as good a harvest. The more you give to the Lord, well, the more He can give back to you. I tell you, Jesus was talking to farmers. He talked about the soils. He talked about a farmer went out to sow his crop. He talked about a man bringing in the harvest into his barns. He was talking to a rural agricultural community. So Gerard understands that the more seed you sow, the bigger the crop. And if you want to harvest 100 acres, you don't put out a peck of seed. You have to get enough to accommodate the size harvest That's you right. want. And he that sows liberally shall reap liberally. He that shows, sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. I like farmers. I used to be like a farmer. You know, I worked hard mm -hmm. on a farm. Some of the hardest work I ever did in my life was on a cousin's farm. It's very satisfying work, though. Oh, it, it is. I well, mean, I mean, when I used to work, I mean, we used to work till 9, 9.15 at night because, you know, it was just the way it was. I mean, you bring the harvest in, you, you just keep on it's working. It's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but I tell you, when you go to sleep, you go to sleep. You're not tossing and turning and wondering what's happening next. But I'd be up at 5 in the morning and have to slop the hogs and do all this. I mean, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> and it, it, it feels good. Yes. Well, it's hard work. It's work that, that produces yeah. a bounty. And the principles are principles that apply to everything in well, our lives, really. George large figured them out because it isn't easy. Farming is tough. But anyhow, we have something that I want to recommend to you. It's called Powerful Life, God's Powerful Promises. I've got 
some teachings. Gordon has some teaching. And uh, we'll give this. This comes out every month to those who join something called Pledge Express. And what is that? Well, you, you tell your bank, I want to give $20 a month to the 700 Club. So you just fill out a form, and the bank just automatically sends it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about stamps and postage or any of that. And uh, it comes to us quickly, and uh, it's nice. And we save money, and we can afford, therefore, to send out some nice teaching to you guys mm -hmm. for free. It's wonderful. Okay. It's wonderful. Well, when we come back, we're going to be praying for you, speaking of you, praying for you and your needs. So stay with us back in a moment. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson. I've had the privilege of traveling all around the world and seeing firsthand the difference you're making through your partnership. All around the world, you bring the hope of Jesus Christ to people who have nowhere to turn. In Haiti, you are there, bringing much needed medicine, clean water, and food to help the Haitian people through this disaster. And just like you did for I and her grandmother, when they lost their home, I lived for months in a chicken coop, battling lice, fleas, and cold, wet weather. That's when you rescued this family and provided a warm, loving home for I through Orphan's Promise. You filled her life with love and hope. Your monthly gift makes it possible to care for victims of disaster, feed the hungry, preach the gospel, and so much more. Please watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. Imagine giving someone hope for a better future. You do that every day, and it only happens because you were there. baby was only a month old when doctors said he needed surgery. Instead of scheduling the operation, Nova called her sister for prayer, and that set a miracle in motion. Nova and Andre's first child was just one month old when they noticed that his navel was getting larger. We were very concerned. It grew to a size of an adult thumb. So Nova and Andre took their baby to the hospital. There he was diagnosed with an umbilical hernia. Their doctor urged them to have it surgically repaired right away. I was afraid. I could not imagine that my baby had to go through a surgery. Nova called her sister to ask for prayer. Her sister then sent a text message to CBN's prayer counseling center in Indonesia asking them for prayer as well. As the couple made plans for the surgery, they continued to ask CBN to pray with them for their baby's healing. That's when it happened. Over a two-week period, the herniated navel started to shrink until it was completely gone. The baby's doctor was very surprised. From my experience, this is something that rarely happens. But in Ken's case, it was gone in only a couple of weeks. Ken's hernia healed by itself. No medication, no operations. I sent the text message to thank CBN. I wanted them to know the impact they made on us and so many people to rejoice with us that their prayers were answered. You know, we believe in the power of prayer to change things. And people all around the world know that by watching this program. We pray with them. They call into our counseling centers or text in in many parts of the world. And you do the same. And so today we want to take a few moments to encourage you when we share received answers of prayer and then also to pray for your needs, whatever they might be. Okay. This is Brittany. She lives in a place called Linko in West Virginia. She right. found a lump in her breast. For three weeks she was gripped with the fear that it might be cancer. One day she felt led to turn on this program. And Pat, we were praying. You said there's a woman who has a cyst in her breast and you've been concerned it may be cancer. It's not cancer. That thing will go away in the name of Jesus. Brittany felt the Lord speak to her, this is for you, and in no time her cyst completely cleared. Yeah. That's very specific. Well, here's something. Since 1993, Josephine of Detroit, Michigan, had problems with fibroid tumors. They were not cancers, but they'd caused her abdomen to enlarge so that people would say, when's your baby due? Oh, 
Uh, <clears throat> eventually, the fibroids begin to crowd out against her internal organs, and the doctor scheduled surgery. One night, she turned on the television. Terry was saying, you have a problem with fibroid tumors. God is shrinking all of that. You're going to not to need to have them removed. They're just going to go away. Wow. And guess what? Within a week's time, her abdomen had shrunk to normal size. Praise the Lord. They went away. <laughs> Folks, we have a God who can do anything. Nothing is impossible with the God we serve. Put it another way, with God, all things are possible. Terry and I are going to join together. We're going to believe God for you. Nothing is impossible. So as we pray, you pray with us. And let's believe God for you. Father, my dear sister and I join hands together in agreement. We agree with the people in this audience who are suffering. Lord, all things are possible with you. And with you, nothing is impossible. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody has got a growth on their, on their face. And if you put your hand on it right now, it's going to go away. In the name of Jesus, he's healing you completely. Terry? There's someone you're watching this show internationally. Your name's Bartholomew. God has heard your plea, and he's answering your prayer even as we speak. Just receive it. Somebody is nauseated. You're continuously vomiting. Uh, the, the problem right now is, is being taken away. In Jesus' name, he is burning out any viruses that are there. You are completely healed in Jesus' name. Terry. Someone else, you've had gangrene set into your toes for oh. some reason, and... God is literally reestablishing all of the life and the tissue in that part of your body. You're going to be completely healed. This terrible fear. The woman's name is Elena. You've got terrible fear. In the name of Jesus, he casts out fear, for fear has torment. We cast the spirit of fear out of your life, Elena, in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Someone else is pregnant yes. also, and you're very fearful for your baby, Thank speaking you, of fear. But God, your baby's normal. God Thank is you, doing a great work in you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Father. Just declare the victory. Wherever you are, shout the victory. In Jesus Christ, there's victory. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. If you need further prayer, we're here because we love you. We're here because we care. And we, we've got folks on the telephones. They can call. They can take your call, 1-800-759-0700. They're at the phones, and they will be, even though this program isn't on the air any longer in your area, they still are here. So pick up the phone, write the number down, and somebody's here to take your call and to pray with you. Well, we leave you today with these words from the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Well, that's all the time we've got. I appreciate everyone from Lee and Terry. This is Pat Robertson saying goodbye. God bless you. Tomorrow, he's been king of the court for nearly two decades. Now meet the woman who taught him toughness. Shaquille O'Neal's mom joins us live. And then, he said, I want to show you how much I care about you. A young singer is forced to make a choice. Her career, we walked in and there was no one else there. And he locked the door. Or her life, he shook me and said, you would not be where you are today if it wasn't for me. On the 700 Club. While Mary feeds her two young daughters, she also helps feed needy families around the world. While Bob hands a drink out to a co-worker, he helps give water to villages with new wells. And while Carl builds a house for his son's new puppy, he helps rebuild homes in disaster areas. 
These people all have something in common. They're CBN partners who have joined Pledge Express. I hope you'll consider joining Pledge Express too. It's a way to simplify your own life while speeding help to others, all at the same time. There are no checks to remember or stamps to buy, and your gift goes to work faster, helping those who need it most. So join us and change the world for someone today.